Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to So You Want to Buy a Variegated Monstera. So the aim of this video today is to try and provide you with an insight on which kind of version of a variegated Monstera that you may wish to buy if you didn't know that variegated Monstera, as we know and love it, comes in kind of two forms. Now you do. And I will briefly explain the two forms, the differences between them and some points to consider, a little bit about how much you might pay for one, etc, etc. So variegated Monstera generally, generally falls into two types of Monstera. The first of those is known as the Monstera Albo Borzigiana. I have one right here. It's a cutting. This is Monstera Albo Borzigiana. And to my other side, we have another very large Albo Borzigiana there. In addition to the Albo Borzigiana, there is also the Monstera Thai Constellation. I have a small one here. This is my own personal tie that I've been growing for a while. There is a new leaf coming. I'm very excited. It's very white. Very excited for that. And in the background, I have a much larger Monstera Thai constellation as well. So generally speaking, when you're going to buy a variegated Monstera online or elsewhere, if you see a plant that is sold as a cutting, so maybe a couple of leaves, more like this one I have here, that is more than likely to be a Monstera Albo Borzigiana. Whereas conversely, if you're trying to buy a variegated Monstera and you find yourself looking at a very young plant, like no fenestrations, which just means no splits, then it is very, very, very likely to be a Monstera Thai constellation. So I'll repeat, with Albo Borzigiana, you're probably more than likely to be trying to buy a cutting or a fully fledged plant. And with the Monstera Thai constellation, you could be buying a cutting, but more often than not these days, during the time you know that I'm filming this video, you will probably more than likely be paying for a young plant. This is because the variegation in a Monstero Albo Borzigiana is like a natural mutation and the mutation found in the Monstera Thai constellation is a product of something that we know to be called tissue culture. So tissue culture is a process whereby plants are grown in a special growing medium in lab conditions. Now in the case of Monstera Thai constellation, I think there is only one known lab actually producing these plants of, you know, of any known quantity, which is a bit of a problem because it means that numbers of these plants are quite low and it also drives the cost of the plant right up. Conversely, the Albo Borzigiana is not usually produced in this way and cannot really be produced in this way. It's not really viable because the variegation in an Albo Borzigiana is a natural defect and the variegation in an Albo Borzigiana massively depends on the variegation found, you know, the, the number of mutated cells found in one of these leaf nodes. So therefore trying to reproduce this under lab conditions is much more difficult. Conversely, in a Monstera Thai constellation, all of the cells are actually mutated. So it is very, very easy to clone this plant and the variegation will just be present throughout because as I say, it's just not the same as this. So to condense further, Monstera Thai constellation is probably produced in a lab. It's not really found in cutting form. And the Albo Borzigiana is more than likely to be found naturally occurring and will be found in cuttings and will be sold on as cuttings or full plants. So now that I've briefly given you a cover of these two different types of Monstera variegata, shall we call it, I'm now going to go into some very brief differences between these two in order to help you kind of understand and work out which one you might prefer to get your hands on if you are looking for a variegated Monstera. But the first topic I'm going to cover is structure and general appearance of these two plants. So both types of these Monstera do have leaves that stem from something called a leaf node. I'm just gonna call this a node. And I'm going to refer to the spaces between these leaf nodes on the stem of the plant as internodal spacing. So with a Monstera Albo Borzigiana, the internodal spacing, so the space between those leaf nodes is much longer, should we say, than that of a Monstera Thai constellation. Sometimes this can be 10 centimeters at least between the nodes on the plant, which isn't really a bad thing. There's actually pros and cons of this, for example, a pro of this is that it's probably much easier to take cuttings because you can cut the plant. There is, you know, much more of a gap between those leaf nodes. You should be able to get decent cuttings from these plants and it should be, you know, a little bit more obvious on where to cut if you'd like to propagate your plant and clone it or sell bits of it or whatever you'd like to do. A con of this would be that the plant doesn't usually look as full as maybe a Thai constellation might look, as I say, because the gaps in between these nodes, these leaf nodes, are larger. So you will 
will get a little bit more of a sparse kind of vining appearance compared to that of a Thai constellation. In the Thai constellation, the internodal spacing, so the space between the nodes, is much, much, much shorter. Again, pros and cons. This would mean that the plant could appear more bushier and more fuller in appearance, but a con of this would definitely be if you want to propagate it, you know, it's not necessarily going to be easy to cut that space between those leaf nodes to, you know, take a piece of your plant and propagate it. It's not impossible, it's just much more difficult than what it would be with, you know, the Albo Borzigiana behind me. A quick other note on the leaf size of these plants. So the Albo Borzigiana generally is, it's kind of considered a little bit more of a dwarf form of Monstera compared to the Thai constellation. So the petioles on an Albo Borzigiana, that's this stem here connecting the leaf to the, you know, the, the main stem of nodes. They are much, much longer and the leaves are much smaller in, in size compared to the Thai. I don't think you're probably going to get more than a 30 centimeter leaf on an Albo Borzigiana. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You might want something a little bit more compact and with smaller leaves. Conversely, on a Thai constellation, they can get much, much larger than that, like way larger, double the size, three times the size easily, no problem. So that would depend on what you're looking for there. So I'll now quickly move on to what a lot of people consider to be obviously the most important bit, and that is variegation. So the variegation on a Monstera Albo Borzigiana, for starters, is brilliant white. Like, I don't know if you can see this on camera. It is very, very white indeed. I do hope that comes off as white. There's a caladium here in the front of the frame, and that is white. So hopefully this also comes off as white. It is also probably a mixture of being sectoral, which means in big chunks such as this. I will pick this up again for the 50 millionth time. Or it can be more of a speckled, dashed, dispersed variegation. It depends on the plant. You would have to pick literally the plant specifically if you want more of a sectoral variegation or if you want one of this you would have to really inspect the plant or inspect the cutting and pick the one that most you know appeals to you should we say it does have to be said though that the variegation on these plants is not stable which means because variegation in the plant depends on how much variegation is in this leaf node. So the next leaf node new from this will either have the same amount of variegation or less variegation. It will massively vary across the plant and you can lose the variegation if you don't make sure that you keep a good even amount of this. So it would mean that you'd have to cut your plant to preserve the variegation depending on whether you've got too little variegation or even too much variegation, because as you may or may not know, the green in the leaves is what is known as chlorophyll. And chlorophyll, if you do not already know, is what plants use to photosynthesize. So if there is no green, the plant cannot take energy from the light and it can't really grow. So while variegation is very pretty to us, we do have to bear in mind that you do need a good balance. For example, this is a very nice balanced cutting. It has a little bit of sectoral, it has a little bit of speckled, but it, there is plenty of green there. So that is a very healthy balanced cutting for an elbow. It's probably what you would be looking for if you're looking to buy a cutting. Conversely, the variegation on a Monstera Thai constellation is kind of speckled and flecked, but it is literally more of a constellation pattern. I guess that's where it gets its name from. So there's loads of little speckles all over the leaf. The parts of the leaf that are not variegated probably won't be a solid green. It's not impossible, but it's highly, highly, highly unlikely. And in addition to that, the variegation, in my opinion, on the Monstera Thai constellation is a little bit more of an off-white. I would say it was closer to a cream, so it is not as, you know, brilliant white as the Monstera Albo Borzigiana. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera. I don't think you can see the tie because it's too tall. So I will actually insert some footage of what the tie looks like so you can see what I'm talking about. But generally speaking, the variegation on the tie is just not quite as bright. However, there is something brilliant about the Thai constellation's variegation, and that is that it is stable, which means you will not have to chop your plant to keep the variegation. You will be absolutely fine. That said, the variegation can be a little bit chaotic, shall we call it? So you're not necessarily going to get, you know, a big chunk of variegation on the next leaf if the previous leaf had a big chunk of variegation. It just doesn't work in the same way to what an Albo Borzigiana does, which obviously it's based on the previous leaf node. So to repeat, the variegation on an Albo Borzigiana is dependent on that leaf node, whereas the Thai constellation is not. It can be chaotic, however, you cannot predict the variegation on each leaf. It's kind of random, to be honest, but you will get a good amount of variegation. It's nothing to worry about. You will still have a lot of white on your plant. 
The next topic I will very briefly cover is the subject of general hardiness, so how tolerant the plant is to underwatering, temperature, all that kind of thing. And generally speaking, they're both pretty much the same. I would argue personally that the tie is a little bit stronger if you felt the leaves of a tie constellation compared to an Albo Borzigiana or a regular Deliciosa, then you would probably feel that the tie's leaves are a little bit more woody and the root system is just a little bit chunkier. I personally think the tie is a little bit hardier than the Albo, so I wouldn't say there was too much of a difference in care there. I wouldn't say it was negligible, I just think honestly you will be fine with either, so I wouldn't necessarily allow anything to do with hardiness or general care to rule your decision. I think you will honestly be fine with either. Next topic, and I have kind of covered it, but I will cover it very quickly again, and that is ease of propagation. So as I mentioned before, the internodal spacing on the Alba Borzigiana is much larger, which does mean you can get a pair of scissors in there a lot more easily and make a cut and propagate your plant. Conversely, tie constellation, the internodal spacing is much, much shorter, which means it will be much harder to get a pair of scissors in or a pair of shears or a knife or whatever your poison is to propagate that plant. Not only that, but due to the fact that the internodal spacing on a tie constellation is shorter, it would mean that when you propagate your plant and you put, you know, the stem in water, if the stem rots in any way, it will be so close to a leaf node, it is much more likely to spread to that leaf node and kind of kill your cutting off, I guess. One way around that, and I have actually done that on this, and you can do this on both uh, types of monster, is I've actually coated the base of where I've cut. I've actually coated the base of that in wax to stop that from actually rotting or anything, so that's totally protected. You can do that on either, it's just much, much easier to do that with an Albo Borzigiana than it is with a tie. The next topic or subject I would like to cover is how easy these plants are to find. Now, I have noticed one is significantly, to me personally, more easy to find than another. Of course, as with anything rare, this can depend on your country and, you know, kind of what's going on around there and what's being sold. But generally speaking, I find that the Albo Borzigiana is much, much harder to find. There are full plants going. As you can probably see, I have one here. I may have got that recently. But that was actually quite hard to find. It cost a reasonable amount of money. They're not really floating around in shops. And if they are, they're sold extremely, extremely quickly. So if you can get your hands on a large one, totally recommend it. If not, people do tend to go down the cuttings route and they are reasonably easy to find cuttings, but they're very few and far between. So there's never a lot of cuttings out at one time. And covering the tie constellation, because it's being tissue cultured, it does mean that batches of tie constellation are coming out. So for that reason, I would suggest they are easier to find and they will definitely be produced probably more often than honestly what a cutting from an Albo Borzigiana is or, you know, the time it would take to grow one of these full plants that you see behind me. Again, I don't think that's a big factor in which Monstera you choose, but it is just something to note if you're looking for that, if you're wondering which one is easier to get your hands on. The last topic I'd like to very briefly cover is how much you may or may not expect to pay for one of these plants. So a good quality cutting with a good amount of variegation of an Albo Borzigiana will probably set you back between, I don't know, 35 and 45 Great British Pounds. That is, I wrote it down, that is between 45 and 55 US dollars if you're curious. This one right here, for example, if I were to sell this, I would honestly sell this for probably about 45 Great British Pounds because it's a two leaf cutting. It's got a very good spread of variegation, as I mentioned before. It's sealed off with wax. It's got a very nice chunky aerial root there and it's just very, very healthy. So you could very reasonably expect to pay that much for a cutting. So for a Monstera tie constellation, if I just pull this one very quickly into the forefront, it would really depend on the size of the plant you're going to pay for because you're probably going to be getting a juvenile plant more than likely. If you pay for something like a plug, so, you know, in a nine centimeter pot, say, you're probably more likely to pay around maybe 45 Great British pounds and a slightly larger one, maybe a little little bit larger than this, I would probably expect to pay about 75 Great British Pounds, which works out at anywhere between 55 and 95 dollars for your range of paying for one of these plants. The large uh, Thai constellation, kind of like the one behind me that, again, I will insert footage of that you see before you, is not really available on the market yet, so that will be a plant like one of these that somebody has grown larger. You could probably expect to pay, obviously, considerably more for that. They do tend to get pretty pricey, so you're definitely into trouble figures without a doubt for one of these 
these. Similarly, of course, to a plant this size, you will also be in treble figures. I'm not entirely sure how far into treble figures you'll be. So depending what you want to do and how much you want to spend, there are a couple of different options depending on which plant you choose. Again, there is no right or wrong plant here. There's no plant that's necessarily better than another plant. It's whatever you think is best for you. Which brings me on to kind of like my additional points to consider. And the first point really is the case of, you know, do you want a fully fledged plant or are you happy to start from a cutting? Because if you're happy to start from a cutting, then I would honestly say that the Albo Borzigiana might be the one for you. Maybe you have a little bit less money to spend and you just want to see, you know, how you go with the cutting. Then I would honestly recommend the Albo Borzigiana. If you do want a fully fledged plant, that's difficult. They're kind of like the same because you, they're both going to be a little bit hard to find. They're both going to be similar prices. So that's that's kind of up to you but the main thing is whether you want a cutting or a large plant. Another thing I would kind of consider is maybe how much space you have or the kind of space you have. For example, I'm not talking about light at all. I'm actually talking about, you know, the dimensions of the space you have. For example, the Alba Borzigiana behind me is usually grown on a moss pole and it will be grown quite vertical. So it won't really grow outwards. Do you know what I mean? It's more of a compact, tall plant. Conversely, the Thai constellation behind me kind of just grows where it wants. You can't necessarily control how that thing grows it will kind of do what it wants to do you can try and control it if you like i don't think you can so basically it's more likely to grow you know big and outwards whereas the alba borzigiana behind me will tend to grow a little bit taller and thinner so if you're kind of stuck for space maybe you might want to go for the alba in addition to that obviously the leaves will only get so large on this in addition to the size and space you know debate i will mention very quickly that i'm pretty sure thai constellation grows much quicker than the alba I don't necessarily know why that is, but I do believe it is a bit faster. So that is something else to consider if you really need to keep, you know, management on your plant. This one will grow faster and it will probably be much more difficult to prune than, of course, this one will be. Thirdly, obviously, are you happy to work to keep the variegation or do you just want to not think about it? Because if you want to not think about, you know, oh my God, is it going to revert? Then I would obviously recommend the Thai constellation. If you aren't so worried about keeping variegation, then, of course, the Albo Borzigiana is still a very good choice. Again, you will have to keep an eye on it, but I don't imagine you'll get too scissor happy. I guess it just depends on the quality of the specimen that you originally buy. And if that is the case, obviously look for a cutting or a full plant with a good balance of variegation. You do not want too much white and you do not want too much green. So that is the comparison between a Monstera Albo Borzigiana and a Monstera Thai Constellation. There is no right or wrong choice if you wish to buy a variegated Monstera. Honestly, it's what you prefer. Some people just don't like the look of the tie and they prefer the elbow. Some people like, you know, the large leaves with all the holes in and, you know, the big grandeur of it. And then they do prefer the tie. There really is no right or wrong. It's genuinely what you prefer. Both of them are beautiful. I do happen to have both and I love them both. And if I had to choose one, I don't think I could. So you know, but I, everyone knows I have a problem with these things. So of course I own both. If you have any questions or differences or anything you want to share about these two plants, please feel free to leave them down below. If there's something I've missed out, please again, leave it down below. I'm not an expert. You know, I do get things wrong. So please help, you know, share the love, share the knowledge. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It does let me know that I'm doing a good job of making videos for you guys. And if you'd like to see any more of my content like this or like any other content that I have previously produced, then please hit that subscribe button. Any video requests, leave them in the comments. I do read the comments. I'm so sorry, I can't always reply to all of your comments. There are a lot of comments on my videos. I'm not ignoring you guys. It's just a lot. <laughs> and until next week, I will see you later. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and goodbye for now. Bye.